So the problem with grass is that there's just too many white people in the grass. The like, problem with grass is not enough Guardian journalists touching it. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's the real issue. In case you're wondering what we're talking about, we'll get it up. This is the article here that's uh, spurred a lot of interest because what the heck. The English countryside still feels like a white middle class club. We can and will change this. Oh, says Dan. Dan. Dan, if you don't feel welcome somewhere, maybe the reason for that is because you're not. I uh, I don't know why he would feel unwelcome at all. Anyway, uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Well, it's not just. I with... think it's just him though. It is just him. <laughs> it is entirely just him. There's just like there's white people in the grass, like the snow is speaking Finnish or the trees are speaking Vietnamese. The countryside, the hedgerows yeah. are speaking English to me, and uh, he's 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 got mad about that. Is he looking at the crime rates of the shires and being like, well, this isn't anything like London? Um, that is one of the complaints. <laughs> so we'll we'll start off with crime being we'll just promote something on Lotus dot com, which uh, was crime, which is Frank Dakota's The Tragedy of Liberation. Which oh, is... good. Dan's going to follow the footsteps of Mao and create the new man. Yes, because uh, you may remember Mao mm. turned up in China and went, "This isn't real China." <laughs> <laughs> you know what real China is. <laughs> Everyone's starving to death and murdering each other. <laughs> Literally fields of corpses. Yeah, and uh, Dan has a similar yeah. well problem where he's gone, God damn it, it's all so peaceful and quaint. This is <laughs> real England. I, I want to I wanna have it destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Well, start off, because there, there, there are mock outlets that predicted this. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a fake Guardian outlet that was made to take the piss out of the Guardian. <laughs> and in 2020, they, they published this. Lifestyle. <laughs> Why aren't more nature countryside walks being created specifically for the needs of black, Asian, and minority ethnic groups? <laughs> Three oh, years Dan, early. Do you feel silly? He, he is he is actually the the joke <laughs> version of himself. And then if we go to uh, some other memes that were made about this, Cecil Road memes yeah. came out of the works. We oh yeah, that. I totally agree with this one. The African countryside still feels like a black hunter gatherer <laughs> club. We can and will change this. Cecil Rhodes. These poor, belighted savages are yet to be blessed with the civilizing effects of the Anglo-Saxon race. And blah, 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 as Cecil Rhodes would have written. Which is basically Dan's position, that these poor, benighted, savage Englishmen have yet to be blessed by the civilizing effects of Jamaicans. Yeah, I don't know what we're missing from Jamaica, mm. um, specifically. We've mm. got the recipe, so I mean, that's that argument's out the window. <laughs> yeah, now we've got your food. <laughs> I've, uh, I've purchased your cookbook. Um, so now leave, Mr. Jamie Oliver. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that is true. I mean, what do you need Jamie Oliver for once you've got the book? Well, yeah, great question. So uh, we'll, we'll go back to the article, because first things first, Dan over here. Literally who? Literally in Stroud, eh? <laughs> but, but also literally who? Who the hell is Dan? Why, 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 why someone is about to start terraforming the Shires. Exactly, but keep that in mind. Where I live, he writes, in Stroud, Gloucestershire, I feel privileged to have a gorgeous view of the valleys out of my bedroom willow window, stretching as far as the eye can see. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. It's a postcard perfect... Dan's like, yeah, this has to change. <laughs> it's a postcard perfect sea of green that looks just as beautiful in the summer sunshine as it does on a frosty winter's morning. And why do you hate it? Why are you upset? Why do you... Go, go enjoy it. So everything's brilliant. Go for a walk. But... Oh. <laughs> comma. As a person of oh. colour... God. Living in a rural area... Many of the fields I can see feel off limits to me. <laughs> Why? Those fields are off limits. I mean, is, this, is there a guard you... by the gate to these fields? But like, no blacks, no Irish. Just checking no bags to see if yeah. you're hiding any black children yeah, in them no. so before you can go and touch the grass. Excuse me, sir. You have far too much mail, and then turn around and go back to yeah. where you came from. <laughs> back, back, go back off with you. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen the British Constabulary? They usually wear hoods. Um, <laughs> Not not rainbows. They're not normally out in the countryside, to be honest. No, I also think there's a new division of uh, countryside keepers, as we call them. A government review in 2019 found that I'm not alone in thinking this. <laughs> the, the, the fields are... But I'm sorry, that just in indicates there are loads of idiots. Yeah. I'm loads not the only who... idiot in this country. That's, that's true. Lots of people who live in the city and don't know what a cow is or seem one. They just know it as beef. Mm. They don't think they're allowed in the in the grass because the white people will get them. I don't know. I, I, what, what is wrong with you? Many black, Asian, and ethnically diverse people, because remember, white people are not diverse, reportedly view the countryside as an exclusive, mainly white, mainly middle-class club. He okay. then presides his reasoning, which is none. I'm not joking. There is no reasoning to that. Right, okay, yeah. He, no. he just says it's uh, the case. Well, what he's saying is that English people live in the English countryside. 
Yeah. And, uh, and he doesn't really want to associate with English people. He wants to associate with other migrants. He he wants to live in London, but yeah. with fields. Which... Sorry, you can move to whatever country you came from, or your, your parents came from. His grandparents are from Jamaica. Well, there we go. So, I mean, he could, there are go fields. There. I think there are fields in Jamaica. I, mean, I imagine might, there are. It might be the surface of Mars. I don't know. Yeah, it could be a blasted <laughs> desolate wasteland in the Caribbean. In an attempt to challenge this perspective of the countryside in an exclusively white area, the Independent Cinema Office and the Lux Arts Agency have commissioned a program called Right of Way to show alongside archival shots exploring the history of the natural trails. He's, oh, yeah. he's talking about archival shots of black people in the countryside, in case you're wondering. There is some, like, 1950s footage of a black family once having a picnic. Amazing. And they're like, oh, look what we found. Proof that England has always been diverse. <laughs> yeah, nah. But it's, it's a really weird obsession, obviously. However, himself, my film, Black Strangers, which I'm sure is going to be insightful and not just... Just, I can't wait just, to watch it. Just complete yeah. sludge. Yeah. Follows my attempts to search for an 18th century namesake of mine, a mononymous Daniel who was buried in a nearby Nymphsfield on 35th of December 1719 and was de described in records in held in Gloucestershire archives as being simply a black stranger. Really? So 300 years ago, there was a black man in Gloucestershire for some reason. Maybe. And I, someone who has nothing... To connect me with him other than the colour of my skin. Except he's barely even black. Except he's that. obviously, yeah, barely even black. I, I'm going to go and dig up his bones and say, brother. <laughs> no more brother war. <laughs> yeah. Just what? What? You've got no connection to this man. So he's, he's, uh, he's, he's also made a film whining about how the countryside is white. <laughs> the reason he's done that is... Do um, you know what the problem with England is, Callum? Too many English. Yeah, he doesn't explain his reasoning either for that one. But that's because that's what that's, that is. That's just it. Yeah. Just never explain it. I made the film in the aftermath of my involvement in the council-led consultation in Shroud. Ah. Now, I assume it was a debate in Shroud about to kill all the black people to, to, to focus your efforts like, so much I, on, I, I, on I the actually, racial divide of Shroud. I actually know what they're talking about here. Kind yeah. Of, it kind of is, actually. Not really. It kind of is. It's the, it's the, there are too many black people represented in Stroud, and when you start removing yes. some of that representation. You're quite right. And Dan here was leading that charge. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe we should start listening to Dan. Maybe he's... He was asking the people of Stroud about the Black Bloy Clock. Stroud's consultation drew media attention from outlets across the political spectrum and ignited a culture war debate. Now, I think this is interesting, because I looked into this, because there are a lot of... Um, uh, pubs and stuff called the black boy and yeah. stuff like this and everyone's like but that's got nothing to do with an african because it was king uh, charles king charles was it the first i think it was with black hair and so he was called the black boy because it turns out that other things than skin can be black i mean in this case it actually was a replica of a black boy but yeah actually in this case it is what with we could spear. call black representation yeah but this is all this individual is dan over here he's just a local whiner and if we go to the next link here, we can see how local, <laughs> local man winds in the Guardian. <laughs> but no, seriously, I because know. he has no other publications in the Guardian. The the Stroud Greens are sharing his thing. I happen to oh, notice yeah. doing my yeah. research, and it's like, yeah, interesting. Hmm, I wonder which party he belongs to, and spends his time whining with. Mm. Who knows? Uh, he's also a local pronoun user. Of course, he is. He is a pronoun fan. Pronoun aficionado. If we go to his Instagram. You can see that. He him. In case oh, I couldn't have guessed that. <laughs> And as you can see, he then has uh, the black boy there as his only accomplishment in life. He he once saw black representation and went, none of that. <laughs> that is his um, I just crowning achievement. I just don't understand why we have to take down every representative, representation of a black person in England. I don't know if there's a, a higher picture for people to see, but if you scroll, maybe you'll find it. There's uh, the black boy there. Um, yeah. In case you're wondering, it's a th sculpture that was made in the 1700s of a black person with a spear, who is obviously tribal because it's the 1700s. Mm. Um, they had not quite got to Wakanda in uh, West Africa well, at we, that point. We, we talked about this, and they still didn't have the wheel, did they? Well, these days they have uh, spaceships, I've seen on Hollywood, so it's, well, uh, fine, yeah. quite, quite a thing has changed. But you might have noticed that he's got a spear, and I, I'm harking on that because he keeps claiming, this individual, that it's a representation of slavery. Slaves don't have spears. Yeah, no, that's a representation of the person who captured the slaves. Yeah, that's a representation of a slaver. Mm. A hard-working black man with a high-paying job. Um, he, was, he was a crown in his community, provided for his family by stealing other families. 
but that's the reality of history. Anyway, it was someone put that up in the local town to be like, hey, isn't this isn't this neat? There you are. No, no, I'm Texas kind of on board there. with taking down the statue of a slaver now. Yeah, well, I, mm. I stand with um this chap. <laughs> Uh, so we go to his website, Dan's, just to check out more about this individual. How do you get some piece of crap published in the article like that? Where you're just like, oh, you know what the problem is? White people. Get rid of them. Good. Oh. Okay. Give them an article. How do you get that published in The Guardian? Yeah, how do that's you... That's practically everything they publish. But let's check out just this Even person's background. Even tangentially. Because uh, I did. And this is his own website where he just jacks himself off. Well, obviously, it's his own website. Yeah, but it's like the wankiest thing on earth. Okay. Quote, the new commissions interrupt and challenge the enduring perception of the rural idyllic as an untouched and unchanging space where time stands still. Nobody thinks that. They're talking about the countryside as yeah. a beautiful, wonderful place. Yeah, but nobody thinks that the English countryside has been locked in some sort of primordial stasis. Like well, the, the reason it's covered in hedgerows is because it's constantly been used. Yeah. What happens when black, Asian, and other ethnically diverse people enter the landscapes? Oh, God. Why does everyone else have to be ethnic rather than us? I also love the idea that it's like, it, it's almost like a white nationalist talking where they're like, what happens if I put a black here? <laughs> well, the whole thing will fall apart, maybe. I don't know. Let's find out. It's like, what? what, what, what? what? <laughs> black, Asian, and uh, Asian isn't an ethnicity. No. Like, he, he Asian black, is a actually. massive continent. Filled with billions of people. I mean, black or neither of those are ethnicities. No, yeah, well, yeah, black isn't an ethnicity either. But the only ethnic diverse people... At least black isn't a location. See, whites can't be <laughs> ethnically diverse, even though there's, like, what, I think about 200 ethnicities in Europe? There, there, yeah, there are loads of ethnicities in Europe, and I don't want any of them wandering around the English countryside either. You really? You, really, you don't want the... Uh, no, I don't the... want the Germans bloody wandering around. Like, they've got Tartars. their own countryside. No. Enjoy. Anyway. Go back to Albania. Well, he asks, what will happen <laughs> if I put one of those blacks in the neighborhood? <laughs> which, which is a really weird thing for Dan to ask. Um, just, just average Friday afternoon. Just <laughs> How can our natural spaces be homes to protest, trespassing, activism, and raves? Oh, God, no. I don't want any of that in the countryside. But also, he's like, you know what will happen <laughs> if we put brown people? There'll be protest, trespass. Oh, for fuck. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> There'll be crimes. Oh, this, really, Dan? This is his own writing. Yeah. We'll go to. I don't want any of that in the country. I just want to go for a nice walk. How does this person live writing such crap? Well, he gets money from the box here, which is someplace. They have an article on him talking about how wonderful he is. Mr. Uh, Dan over here, is, uh, he got a bursary and uh, supported a right. new moving image project. Yeah. So he, he's essentially like state funded, basically. But also, what? Who? Re he's making a movie, a moving image project. Was what they call it. Yeah, okay. Film. Like, yeah. Like, like, no, but like it's 1910. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the pictures, you see. <laughs> I, I kind of approve of the uh, antiquated language. Yeah. It investigates historical and contemporary black presences in Stroud. <laughs> like, like they're ghosts. <laughs> why? It's, a, it's an urban legend. <laughs> I mean, it probably is in Stroud, but why? Uh, who wrote this crap? <laughs> to what end? Dan used his bursary to purchase some equipment and software that helped him improve his audio production skills. He developed a generative soundscape for an installation which draws on the unease that comes from being visible as a minority in a predominantly white area of the English countryside. I mean, there's a lot of words to just say he wasted money. If you scroll it's down. A, no, no, it's a lot of words to say, yeah, I kind of don't like white people. Mm. You notice um, the funders at the very bottom there. Uh, Plymouth Arts Council being mm. anyone. You've got the National Lottery, which is uh, run by yeah, government. Yeah. You also have uh, Plymouth Council. Fantastic. Uh, what I love about Dan is literally the only the only notable thing about him is he's black. Yes. That's literally all the... Look, I want to talk about how I've not got the same skin tone as the other people I live around. So, yeah, but why? And also, someone else who isn't me did a thing. Yeah. And I don't <laughs> like it. Well, yeah, there is that. But, like, who cares about that, Dan? But again, it, it's you've done zero. Yeah. With your life. You, you sit and whine. If you go to the next one here, we can see more of like, who funds them. The Box here, in case you're wondering who the hell they were. It's a uh, £46 million cultural destination, so proudly led by Plymouth Council. Plymouth Council so are funding a black guy in Stroud. To be black. To be and black. And that's it. <laughs> right. that's, that's his output. Although, it's not a surprise. Um, they list our values, progressive. They have equality, wow. diversity, and inclusion statements, and confessions. Yeah. Anti-racism party mantras at the bottom as well. About how they're totally anti-racist. Mm. Anyway, it's all it's all tax money, is my point. Yes. Fundamentally. We'll go forward, because we also have the University of Plymouth, who are very proud to have such works as Black Man. Uh, <laughs> is, is literally all this is. This is uh, Dan's work, I think, it's uh, at the University of Plymouth. Um, do you think he did something else than this one thing for his university projects? I don't know. What is this one thing? Uh, whining, again, about the black boy. 
statue. That, okay, well, that's it. Again, literally nothing. Can't have black representation in Stroud. I agree, Dan. Yeah. Get rid of it. If we go to the installation, just to see what the hell they're whining about. I mean, this is Dan's work here, is he took some footage that someone else took of the black boy statue and then got some footage of when he was four years old and also a black boy. Okay. And put them next to each other. Okay. Isn't what? it stunning, Carl? I mean, what? Isn't this moving? Well, <laughs> I don't really understand what his problem is, to be honest. And I'm actually going to take him seriously for a minute. Because this doesn't seem, the, st the statue itself doesn't seem degrading. No, it doesn't. Like, it doesn't seem like it's like, you know, an insult. He hasn't got a collar around his neck. He's not on his knees. No. He like, bangs a bell. The guy that made this in the 1700s wasn't mocking black people. Yeah. It was actually like, oh, they, they look different, so yeah. let's, let's draw one Isn't of them. Isn't this something interesting. interesting and different and foreign? Uh, no, they can't have those things anymore. Can't have right. anything nice. Well, have a look at him himself. Okay. Because um, the thing is, he's a boy. He's, he's not really achieved oh, yeah. anything. He's, yeah, yeah. It's rather, regardless of how old he is, yeah. remains a boy. Just whining about statues. And at the same time, being given money and attention from pathetic state propaganda machines. Okay, so here's a quick question. If you don't really like living around white English people... Why don't you go somewhere where you do like the colour of the skin that you, of the people that you're living around? Don't know. Hmm. Who knows? And if we uh, go to the next uh, stuff here, because the thing is, <laughs> like this. this guy, he's he's given a national newspaper and is uh, yeah proved a couple of things, which is mostly these articles are pointless. Number two, because it's it's literally just an outlet for him to whine, but that's what the Guardian pays for. But the hmm. second thing is that this happens all the time in left wing media, and it's kind of annoying that the rightist media doesn't do that because it's literally like left-wing bait you can make, and it has no effect. Mm. Like the left will whine, it'll have no actual effect on your bottom line. Oh, if you're the Telegraph have... or the Daily Mail, they could do that. Well, yeah, yeah. But they just don't, because it's <coughs> pathetic. But um, I suppose in the meantime, we'll all get to enjoy more memes, such as such road memes. But now for some real news, such as local Tunisian man, who I, uh, I just, I just, I don't know if we can play this from the start, because it's, it's um, some actual racism in the world, <laughs> which is really weird. وأخلاقهم تصلح بهم في إفريقيا مصلح بهم في تونس كيفاش أخلاقهم؟ ها؟ كيفاش أخلاقهم؟ أخلاقهم مش أخلاقنا نتاع المغرب العربي، أخلاقهم خاصة بهم هما. أنت تعرف منهم شكون هكا وشفت؟ نعم. تعرف منهم شكون؟ نعرف منهم شكون. تاني جدي كان يجيب فيهم يبيع فيهم ويشرب وقال لي نعرف شكون. Least racist Tunisian male. This, uh, for people listening, uh, it's a Tunisian man being interviewed by Tunisian media. Uh, he's saying, oh, black people don't have the same values as us. She's like, well, have you met any? Trying to, like, more grandstand on him. And he's like, my grandfather used to buy and sell them. What do you mean, have I met any? Oh, <laughs> but there we are. There's something you could actually speak about. And frankly, I want to hear what that guy's got to say in an article. I want to hear what Dan's got to say about that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Dan. You know, we're talking about your fellow non-whites. The non-white race. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, the non-white. Yeah, the non-white. You know, coalition or union that you're part of. You know, do you want that guy wandering around the Stroud countryside with you? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a no, Dan? I, I think he would uh, probably he'd, he'd walk up to the statue and be like, "My brother, like <laughs> slavers in uh, slavery, pride." What? But no, <laughs> what, what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> don't know where that was going. <laughs> but anyway. Tunisian guy's like, hey, one's escaped. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because they're both slavers. Because the guy with the statue. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, but, but Dan isn't. No, that's a whole other conversation to be had. But yeah. anyway, my, my point being, uh, when you uh, can do research into people on the media, you do f have more fun with like realizing what's funny because it's just stupid as well. Like I was sat with my brother the other day and he's watching um, some football show and they've got flags and signs everywhere about don't be racist, racism bad, black lives matter. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm looking at that thinking, what a waste of time. Can and I get a Tunisian opinion on that? <laughs> <laughs> but then my brother was looking at it and he just went, why am I watching this crap? I know more about football than these nonsense and changed it and i was great like point yeah it's great and a lot of the people you see on you know legacy media such mm. as the guardian or tv is just like yeah these people are actual morons i hate to say but dan did look fairly mediocre yes like well he's not done anything so no. i think it's an accurate assessment i mean none of the thoughts that he was putting down in the article seemed to be original to him but he couldn't even explain his reasoning it was literally just it's bad am i right isn't it bad to be surrounded by people who aren't the same colour of you? It's like, uh, not in my opinion, Dan, but that's because that's that would be illegal. Some, some kind of hate crime. I don't know what's the demographics of Jamaica, but um, presumably also too white. 
If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Epoch series, this one on historical financial crises. If you'd like to find out what else Lotus Eaters is putting out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.